removing noise from audio recordings. OK, there's quite a lot of different types of noise, but the first one I'm going to deal with is this, the cassette. Now, I've got in the machine up there, I've got part of a self-indulgent blues jam that I recorded when I was 16. You know, those sort of slow blues that last 20 minutes and you're talking about your woman leaving you and all that, aged 16 as a middle-class white Englishman. OK. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that recording back and you can hear that the tape has got some hiss on it. Now, in back in the 1970s, well, the 60s, 70s and 80s, the Dolby laboratories that are responsible for Dolby surround sound that you see in the cinema also had a very, very major role to play in denoising recordings. Now, those of you with cassette machines might have seen Dolby B and C. You think, oh, what are those? Well, they're actually noise reduction systems that are designed to reduce the effect of tape hiss which is a phenomenon that you get if you've got anything with a recording head that plays back. To a certain extent, records, they tried to bring in a noise reduction system for records to reduce surface noise. That didn't last very long because actually if you look after your records, there's not much noise on them at all. Really, just the same amount of noise as the source tape, really. And of course, CDs and MP3s, we don't worry about that now. But what happens if you get a recording that is recorded a bit too low? So I'm going to play back the a little bit of the blues jam. Please excuse the quality of both the playing and the recording. This is basically nearly 30 years ago. So here we go. <laughs> Now there, I'd boosted the top end so that you could hear that it was very hissy, as well as the cymbals being there. It's not too bad a recording. I think it was made on a quite an expensive cassette recorder, but of course the tape is nearly 30 years old. It degrades, more noise comes out of the, off the tape because the signal level is a bit lower because it's degraded a bit. So how do you reduce the noise? Well, the obvious answer is to reduce the treble, but then again, you take away your hi-hats or your cymbals or your clarity of your vocals or the top end of your guitar amp or lots of other things you can essentially take away half your recording if you're not careful so how do we denoise something well with logic pro we also have this the denoiser program and it's okay but you run the risk of getting rid of something don't forget if you denoise something if you take something off a recording that you don't want you'll be taking something off a recording that you do want so levels are very very important even on a digital system what i'm going to do is i'm going to perform a little experiment you're listening at the moment i've got the a microphone here that is taking down my vo voice and putting it on the recorder what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the gain of the mic all the way down pretty much to the bottom and then I'm going to boost the level and you can hear what happens if you record something at too low a level. So here we go. Down goes the gain. OK, so I'm now speaking to you on a microphone that is very, very quietly recorded. I've got the gain control of my very modern sound card turned all the way down. As you're hearing at the moment, I've had to boost the level lots and lots so that you can hear it at the same level as what I just recorded just now. And you can hear that there's quite a lot of hiss and quite a lot of imperfections in that recording. So I'm going to turn the game back up now. And there it was as it was before. Now, I've got the equalization pane here. I'm going to go back and play that same portion of tape again. And you can hear that the denoiser really can destroy quite a lot of what's going on. Now, I've got these, the all the movements of these things um, recorded as well. So when I come to play back and mix this demonstration, you'll hear everything as it was when I did it. So I'm going to play that same piece of music again. I call it music. My goodness. OK, here we go. <laughs>
Now, the trouble is, is that you've got to know the source material. If you go to a very quiet portion of this tape, and because we were teenagers, there's not really a very quiet portion of the tape at all. That's about as quiet as it gets. Now, you can choose the noise type here. You get a, a little sort of control which shows you your uh, the type of noise. Really, what you've got to do is just to tweak until you get something that works. Now, this is a logic plugin. How do you get rid of noise on GarageBand, for example? Well, that's going to be a bit more tricky but you can use still use the EQ pane to reduce that treble now that recording there for me it's a little bit too crisp at the top so that's an advantage I can actually remove a lot of those top frequencies because I actually want to make the thing sound a little bit more middly a bit more sort of gritty now that's something that people often do is leave out the mid-range in their recordings they don't sort of attend to it I'm talking about tightening the bass or making the treble really crisp so that's a, a really an advantage of getting rid of noise you can bring up your mid-range in your mix and take your top end down a bit and that actually might have the added bonus of removing hiss from your recording so that's what I'm going to do now I'm going to find well in fact I'll carry on from the where I stopped now I'm going to try and get a bit of a better sound just by boosting some mid-range and cutting the top end and you might find that the noise disappears so I'm going to bypass the noise filter and I'm going to enable the channel EQ and have another go that's without Now what I did there was just to give a tiny bit of boost at about 3k, 3.5 it says here, and then just gradually roll off everything above about 6 kilohertz. Now the cassette machine at the time, I have no, I can't remember what the make of it was, but it was very expensive and it was the, belonged to the school, this was recorded in the, at the school. And the tape machine was very, very expensive. It's something like a Nakamichi or something similar to that. So it was very, very good technology. But I have some old, older recordings which are really quite terrible. There's no treble response on, on them at all. And in that instance, if there's lots of noise, with lots of tape hiss, if there's no treble on the original recording, you can just take, you can just roll off the top end. It gets rid of the noise, but it's not getting rid of anything else because that thing wasn't there in the first place. Now, the other problem, the other noise that you can come across is mains hum. Now, those viewers in the US, the mains hum runs at 60 cycles per second. That's a bottom B flat. Mm. In UK and, and other places in the world, it's 50 hertz. Mm. And it's a G. So if you're playing something in the key of G and you've got mains hum problems on your recording, you're in trouble. Now, if you listen to any old recordings, old live Hendrix recordings or any sort of live stuff from the 60s and 70s, you'll hear that main time all over the guitar amps. It's a phenomenon that is naturally occur, or I say naturally, with amplifiers guitar pickups anything picks up mains hum. Now if you want to remove mains hum very often it's not 50 hertz or 60 that you need to worry about it's the harmonics of that hum or the buzzing that you get so what you can do with an equalizer uh, equalizer like this is to set the quality factor that is the width of your boost or cut you can set it really thin and you can get rid of problems with your mains hum now there's no particular problem on this recording and I can't think of a recording that I've got where it's an issue so it's a bit hard to describe but what I what I'll try and do is maybe if I plug in something I'll tell you what I've now got the headphone output that this tape machine was the tape was recording on now you're hearing 50 Hertz there 
but with some harmonics of 50 hertz. You're basically hearing this mains hum because my body is picking up mains radiation from you know, power sources, transformers, that sort of thing. It's usually transformers that are the, the issue. So if you move your guitar, for example, near a mains transformer, it's going to be very, very buzzy and hummy. What I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to take 50 hertz off this recording. So I'm going to find 50 hertz on my equaliser. And I'm going to make the quality factor maximum. There it is. So what I did was I took that 50 hertz and I boosted it and I also cut it. But I didn't get rid of the main sum because of the harmonics. However, if you've got things higher up, let's try it. Let's set the harmonics at 100 hertz and then another one at 200 and see if we can get rid of more of that main sum so looking on the display here you can see the 50 hertz one then i'm then i'm going to have a 100 hertz one and a 200 hertz and i'm going to set the quality factor all the way to the top with this now let's try that you'll only be hearing this on one side on the left hand side Now, that hasn't made much of a difference, has it? Now, the harmonic series goes, if we were looking at the 50 hertz, which is your fundamental G, the next octave above that is your G, then the next frequency above that isn't 200, because that implies an octave above. There's a frequency in between. Now, this is where, when you've got a few bands open like this, you could actually play with the frequency band to notch out the main sound problem, so let's do that. I've got rid of a note there. I'm just going to turn up my speakers so that I can hear a bit better. What I was actually hearing there was the seventh harmonic. I was hearing an F over my bottom G. So that I can actually try that with the other frequency band. Well, I've got, I've got a few to choose from. And you can always put lots of equalizers in a row in Logic. So that you can have essentially many, many bands that you can filter out. But you've got to be very careful. As I say, if you've got anything in the key of G, you're in trouble. So anything in the key of A flat or G flat, you might get away with it. So there are other frequencies. If I just go um, get another band up here and then filter that out, I can do the same again. And then you can hear other stuff. Now, if I bypass this, leaving the mains leaving this equalizer completely out of the loop you can hear that quite a lot of it returns see that's not too bad however if you get mains problems with your when you're recording record through a di box now you can see my program about di boxes you can actually um reduce that main sum by lifting the ground. Now, what that means is that you are not allowing a ground loop to occur. The ground loops are the bane of people's existences. Now, if I hold this with my main sum, now, if I also hold the case of the jack, the main sum has gone because I've essentially grounded that interference. I've actually put, sent it to the, the ground wire. The tighter you hold it, the more you can get rid of. So there we go. There is a little bit about reducing noise. You can play with the equalizers quite a lot. The noise recorder, the noise 
uh, denoiser as it's known on logic is pretty good but only if you know exactly what the source material is because if the source material changes like the level of it changes the denoiser may not have the desired effect